Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Brian Jack with Men's Comics. Here we are kicking off your week yet again with another top 10 back issue to buy. We're coming back with another theme week. This one, we are talking about those new 52 DC variant month issues, right? Yeah, that's right. And I know that a lot of people's reactions are going to be, what? Those? But you know what? It's been a few years, and we have long had the theory that a lot of DC cover Bs are going to have their time. And a lot of these books are what give us that feeling. So get ready. We got 10 great books to be on the lookout for that I think most of them are going to be available in bins near you. Coming at number 10 this week, we have that Bombshells Catwoman number 32 variant. Yeah, now these bombshell variants came out in two separate waves. Um, and dropping on the market, uh, these bombshell variants were immediately popular. Uh, this was one of the very first of these themed variant months that DC Comics released. And this kind of nostalgic uh, look at, at some of the various women of the, of the DC Comics universe were popular so much so that we saw a spinoff series. We saw a lot of merchandise and it's stills from statues to t-shirts. The Bombshells program is extremely, extremely popular. Now, the Harley Quinn book is probably the image that everyone's familiar with. But if we're talking comics... Um, and we're talking back issues to be on the lookout for. I would pay attention to this Catwoman number 32. Uh, first off, it's high in the Catwoman run at issue number 32. Past a lot of the story arcs where she was kind of crossing over for that Joker storyline with Batman and Detective Comics and so on and so forth. This features a lower print run. And the cover imagery is extremely popular and one that we've seen kind of reused. Uh, this book is more limited than people realize and not readily available on the secondary market. But I also think it's one that if it's sitting at your local comic shop, nobody's putting any real value on. It's probably available for cover price. Next one we're talking about is that Monsters Catwoman number 35 by Joshua Middleton. Yeah, so this is great for a few reasons. Halloween-themed covers tend to do well on the secondary market, and this cover is absolutely amazing. But on top of that, you mentioned Joshua Middleton, who has now become a major player when it comes to DC Comics variants. We've certainly seen a number of his variants pop off in the secondary market, but this was kind of early when and Joshua Middleton wasn't as well-known. This book did have its moment where it was popular, but like a lot of these books, the ones that were the most popular tended to kind of get pre-ordered by speculators and resellers, and then it made it really kind of difficult to flip them. But over the years, this book has dried up. It's ended up in people's PCs. It's not readily available online in the secondary market. Um, so this is another one I would be on the lookout for in back issue bins near you. We got monsters again with the monsters at Deathstroke number 11 variant. Yeah, and, and similar to what we mentioned with Bombshells, uh, you know, Monsters did uh, a second volume. And in the first volume, they did a Deathstroke number one variant. But like most number ones, that book was very heavily ordered. Fast forward to Deathstroke number 11 in this EM Gist variant. This is very low printed. If you find this book, um, you know, I think it'll be available for cover price or shortly above. It's not certainly not one that I've seen, say, posted on Instagram or people talk about as a, you know, a major variant or back issue, but amazing cover art and limited enough that already that it's already being priced on eBay around that 10 to $15 range. So this is a great one to be on the lookout for. Uh, certainly, again, it, those horror uh, Halloween themed covers, as well as Deathstroke being a popular character in a lower printed series. Yeah, not to mention you're probably going to get some Deathstroke news coming forward. You already heard that yes. they're heavily involving him, and it's like Justice League is going to be a brand new movie, it seems like. That's right. Coming at the number seven spot. Now, we've seen Lego variants before. There's a lot of Lego variants out there, but this is one of the ones that we really like. And it's that Lego Detective Comics number 36 variant. Yeah, and while I know that this is a higher printed book, I've never really understood, Brian, why this isn't a more valuable back issue. It's really been cover price since it got released. These Lego variants were cool. People liked them. They were collected by kids, but they weren't really ever anything secondary market. 
but it's funny. I think about all the things that people speculate on and all the things that people buy and get excited about. We've had a Lego Batman movie. We've also had multiple Lego universe movies. We've had Lego the Batman Lego video games, DC video games, DC video games. They've done like short films for streaming service. Um, this has certainly been a, uh, a, a property that has already proven it's worked. And I think it, none of us would be surprised to see that announcement for another Lego Batman film. And here you have a variant cover depicting Lego Batman, uh, seemingly, I guess, a first appearance of a, a feature film character, and we're not getting um, any sort of heat on that. Uh, and then if you look at the scope of all those Lego variants, sure, there's there's a lot of great ones, and the Batman one is the one that maybe pay, pay attention to with the Joker on, on the cover, but I just think uh, being that Lego Batman is so prevalent uh, kind of with this younger generation, if, especially if you have a long-term view, think about this. Think about the fact that like our kids grew up with Lego Batman as the, probably their first version of Batman they were introduced to. So think about when they start buying up their nostalgia, this is a book they'll be paying attention to. So this may be a very long-term hold, but it's also dirt cheap. I've seen this book for as low as a dollar places. Coming at number six on the list, we're getting to the variants that I loved when these came out. I bought them up just for the comic book reader. I mean, we're talking about some of those movie poster variants. And here we have that WB movie poster, Batman, that mask homage by Dave Johnson. Yeah, and this is honestly probably my favorite of any of the themed variant uh, months. Mine was uh, the there. Teen Titans Lost Boys. Yeah, and I could see that. Um, this more than um, just the cover design alone. If this wasn't a uh, movie poster homage, if you took all of the movie poster trade dress from it, right, and you just had the Virgin cover art image, this would just be an amazing Dave Johnson Joker variant. Uh, just a great close-up depiction of Joker. And you look at the way kind of like portrait variants have become popular in, in the more recent years. This is kind of ahead of its time in that. But also it's kind of cool because like Mask is a, uh, uh, um, a Dark Horse property. So here you have a, a DC Comics book homaging a uh, Dark Horse property. Um, uh, on this uh, uh, variant cover, um, it was high printed because this was a major issue. This was a teased death of both Bruce Wayne and the Joker. Uh, didn't end up being either, but this was a heavily printed issue. This book had a high print run, but it slowly started to dry up as this is a book that people love to buy and put in their personal collections. So I like this one long term. People can't get enough Joker. This is one that definitely caught some heat and it's probably what probably the most expensive book on this list this week. And it's that other movie poster van, but we get that bad girl number 40, that purple rain homage. Yeah, by far the most popular of any of these theme month variants. I almost didn't put it on the list because of that, because I don't know that you'll be able to find this one in the wild without really paying for it. Um, these were all themed after Warner Brothers movies, Purple Rain being the theme for this. And we've certainly seen this uh, style taken that de definitely, uh, you know, kind of began with that G.I. Joe cover. We've seen it popularized here. We saw it done on Bitter Root. Um, and countless uh, retailer exclusive variants. So this is obviously a winning homage. Um, also, there is some relevance here as Batgirl actually rides a motorcycle. So it, it kind of plays into the book a bit more than others. So I think this is one of the key Batgirl variants. Uh, and Batgirl is a character with a lot of meat on the bone. I mean, there hasn't been a Batgirl movie or a TV show. And we've seen a lot of lesser characters from DC get shine. One of the other things that New 52 did is they had some Joker variants going on. This is one of my favorites from that era, and that's that Green Lantern number 41 Ben Oliver variant. Yes, before we did those 80th anniversary uh, books that we've been doing in the last year, these were the 75th anniversary books for the Joker, and every book got jokerized and we got a cool joker variant with the theme of that book and this one with ben oliver a, a great uh green lantern homage green lantern 41 again up there in number past the uh the jessica cruz um jeff john storyline starting to get a lower print run um white cover tougher cover to maintain in good condition over time uh, gorgeous cover art again if it was just released in and of itself forget these theme variants put a negative kind of taste in everybody's mouth 
uh, as they kind of went on. But over the long haul, if you just look at it on this whole, you have a Green Lantern, Joker, uh, Ben Oliver cover, amazing cover art. I think this is one to be on the lookout for in the future. And again, another one you can find cheap in bins. Wow, Green Lantern 41 was probably my favorite of those books. At number three, this one was probably the most popular within the comic community. And we get that Joker Wonder Woman number 41, that Brian Boland variant. Absolutely. This was definitely the most popular with, you know, Joker dancing with um, Wonder Woman. And now I'll say, albeit the Batgirl cover that ended up getting canceled, um, which <laughs> kind of played up on uh, the killing joke themes, which, you know, people- Fish hook felt a bit yeah a bit uh inappropriate so they ended up canceling that I, you know i wish that cover would have been made but this was definitely the cover brian boland kind of classic of a certain era of joker so you know he's one of those cover artists that he's always going to have that fan base who are going to buy into that um so again I, while this is uh, you you're right one of the probably most popular of these books and one of the most popular of any of the theme month variants and already a 10 15 dollar book um, it's still a book where I look at it and go, yeah, it's 10 or $15 book, but it could be a 25, could be a $30 book. Um, it's one I would, I would be on the lookout for. I'm, you know, if you want to buy it for your PC for 10 or 15, by all means, if you're looking to buy it to resell, I would still, again, hunt these books, look for them for cover price. I think the majority of them that you can find them there. This one may be a little tougher. Um, I, certainly that Batgirl is next to impossible, but the rest of them, I think if you hunt hard enough, you can find. Coming in at number two on the list this week, we get that Neil Adams Detective Comics number 49, the homage to 227, which homage is the golden age book, right? Yeah, so we get a bit of a dual homage here. Um, and this was a theme month that was meant to honor Neil Adams. Not only did Neil Adams do the artwork, but he- <laughs> honor him by having him do the work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. It sounds so funny when you say it like that, but you know, he not only did he do all the variant covers, but he homaged his own classic covers um and this is the one there's certainly a few that i think have meat on the bone um that i think you can be paying attention to but this is the one that's really the standout book um that is the one to be on the lookout for it was immediately popular um it got people's attention it rose to about 20 dollars, which was very rare for any of these theme variant months and it's one that i think will stand the test of time uh and it can only go up in value uh so they did a, a also a john ramita um uh variant month as well but none of those books necessarily uh stuck other than justice league 50 but that was really for more j- the three jokers um tie into justice league 50 more than it was the variant cover Hit us at number one on the list this week. Harley had those little black book variants. A lot of people were going around for those. Some of them had just sketches and signed sketches in it. But number one is that Harley little black book, that Batman number 47, the Alex Ross variant. Yeah, so there's different uh, versions. These came polybagged in, the, in these black poly bags. You could leave it polybagged and sell it that way. You could rip it open and you may have a color variant. You may have a sketch variant. You may have a like a, a pen ink line art variant, um, or as you mentioned, you could have signed or sketched variants. Um, so this created almost like a sports card thrill of the chase. And a lot of these are popular, but this one is definitely the winner. First off, Alex Ross, you can't beat it. Um, Batman, yes, it's highly printed, but these things got ripped open out of the poly bags as people were trying to chase these books. Not also, so much once they found like all the, the sketches were, were pretty much t- gone, but... This one, this cover was was so magnificent and people liked it so much that they were open yep. the poly bags even after the fact. Right, yeah. And and it's also a tough grade because yeah. the poly bag rubbing against the black cover, or if it's a sketch or the line art book, it was rubbing against a white cover. So whether it was black or white, it didn't matter. Rubbing against that poly bag wasn't good. So nine eights in this book are a lot tougher. Um also Alex Ross, there's nothing that needs to be said about Alex Ross and his quality. Joker uh, and Batman front and center on a cover like this um, with Harley Quinn. Incredible, incredible cover art. Uh, The way the book was released gives it a little difficulty and intrigue, um, but it's one to pay attention to. Pay attention to the, when you see, you'll find the, when I find this book, I find this book less in back issue bins out of the bag because once people can see the cover art, it's an instant buy. 
but I will find this book more often bagged when a store like, cause he didn't necessarily do that well. So when a store that had a ton of these different Harley v- black book variants, will put them in a box and put $3 or $5 on them. This is the book I look for because this can get you 15 to $20 already. And I think has a ton of room to grow as these continue to dry up on the secondary market. These books are all five to six years old. They all are drying up on the secondary market and going into PCs as we speak. Yeah. It's like finding a, unopened pack of 86 Fleer basketball. You never know what you might get in it. Well, maybe not quite that much, but yeah. <laughs> it is still, I actually have not the Batman 47, but I do have some of those mm-hmm. little black books, like still poly bagged. They were fun. It was really fun to, to open those up and see what you got and try to put together the set of three. J. Scott Campbell did some great covers on some of those titles as well. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, there's some, there's some great artists. Uh, if you're not familiar with this or any of these theme months be sure to check out uh, uh online look all on um the dc's website i know their wikipedia has a lot of that information there's these some of these covers are amazing and they, we could we could do multiple lists but we tried to give you guys a sample of kind of each of these theme months and some of the highlights and make sure that like always with this show and this list that we give you attainable books that have a great chance of growing in value in the future. Yeah. It's books that we've been picking up and add to our collection when we see it. And this list is very niche. There's going to be people that like it. There's going to be a lot of people that don't like it and they're going to let us know either way. That's okay. We always say buy what you like. With that being said, guys, this is Brian Jack with Superman's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video.